Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, with some first thoughts on Game Builder Garage. Uh, the game released last night. I don't really know a lot about it, apart from the fact that it's a game builder sort of thing. Um, I really loved WarioWare DIY uh, for the Nintendo DS, which came out years and years ago, and then just sort of disappeared because Nintendo made a bunch of other consoles that didn't support it at all, and yeah, it just sort of vanished. Um, this one, all I really know is that it's a game builder sort of thing, hopefully similar to WarioWare DIY, which I loved, but beyond that I don't know what to expect, so let's jump in and have a look. This is a free demo, um, which is nice. The game itself is actually a bit cheaper than some of the other titles Nintendo have put out. Uh, it's like half half of their like standard premium, like their standard um major game price, which is nice. Um, it still seems a little expensive, honestly given their track record, but maybe I'll be impressed when I play it and we'll, we'll see how we go. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not really impressed with Nintendo's track record at the moment. Uh, I loved this one. <laughs> and I didn't love this one. I did love this one. <laughs> a lot of the stuff on my right, recent is stuff I love because I'm recently playing it. But yeah, yeah, I, they've played, I made a lot of stuff for the Switch that didn't really impress me. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, we'll see if this one is impressive. Uh, I don't know if this is the right spot for my face. Well, we'll see how we go. The lies there. Game Builder Garage demo version. Interactive lessons or free programming? I can't pick free programming. I'm guessing that's just not in the demo. So I'm going to go interactive lessons. Okay. Uh, introducing us to the concepts by giving us a little game to play by the looks of things. Uh, I cannot grab the apple. Oh, that's deliberate. Looks like you need some help. Don't be shy, I'm here to help. You can call me Bob. You were in a spot of bother because you couldn't finish the game, right? You couldn't jump by pressing B, so you can't reach the apple. There's a reason for that, you know. You see, the thing is, this game is still under construction. But the way it is now, you could spend your whole life trying you'd never beat it. Oh, please don't get mad. We do a deep dive into the game, we'll get it soon finished. Soon get it finished. Behind the curtain, so to speak. Why don't we do that right now? Okay, so I can press plus? Yeah. Could you press this? I think this is intended that... Okay, that's directly under my face, so I'm just gonna move my face. Hopefully this corner will be better. Yeah, I think you're supposed to use the touch screen for this a lot of the time, but I'm playing, you know, so I can record, so I can't use the touch screen. Just using a pro controller. Ooh. Okay, I think the best spot to put my face is probably this corner, actually, from what I'm seeing here. So let me just put it up there. There we go. Oh, if it isn't our Bob. Good to see you, darling. You alright? <laughs> well, hey, it's Bob. Boing. Welcome inside the game, Daniel. Ah, oh, so you want to invite our friends here? These beings are called Nodon. There's all kinds of different Nodon living inside your Nintendo Switch console. You call up Nodon onto this here program screen and then connect them together. Then pow, you're actually altering the game's program. This place where we use Nodon to do programming is a nifty little name. The Game Builder Garage. That's the name of the game we're playing. This little fragment of game you played earlier was also programmed in the Game Builder Garage. Now then, let's get down to it. We use the Game Builder Garage to finish this game. Uh, the blank look you're giving me, Danielle. I'm, I'm not giving you a blank look. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a software developer. This is my job. I, I can probably figure it out. <laughs> you're going to use programming to finish building this game. Not as daunting as it might sound, all you need to do is make it so pressing B lets you jump. It's the output port on this button node on. Connect it to the jump port on the person node on. Oh, I see. Yo, I'm button node on. I know exactly what you're gonna do. You're gonna push the button, like bang. Yeah, I got you figured. Hi there, I'm a person node on. Nice to meet you. You saw a little character on the game screen, right? I'm the one who puts it there and moves it around. Alrighty, hold down A and move the pointer with L the way I show you to make this connection. Okay, so this is my pointer here. Definitely on the touch screen this would make more sense than using a, like an analog stick, but 
It's not too bad. If pressed, jump. And hey presto, we've made it so pressing B makes the character jump. Now we should be able to clear the game. Why don't we head back to the game screen and give it a go? I can jump again. Or for the first time, I guess. Booyah. I'm, I'm amazing. You did it! Great job! You got to finish building a game with a bit of programming. Well then, why don't we nip back to the program screen? So, oh, how do you find how did you find it? Wasn't it fun learning how to program a game? I mean, sure. <laughs> Actually, I think you might have a real knack for this, Danielle. Yeah, I do. <laughs> How about it? Do you want to program some more games? If you do, we may be interested in your new pal Bob's interactive lessons. Like just now, you'll go through all pro programming all kinds of games with me as your guide. And by the end, you'll have what you need to make your own game all by yourself. But how about it? If you like taking some of my thrilling interactive lessons, why not? Brilliant! In that case, I've got an awesome bunch of games for you. Let's take a look. Okay, oh I see. We're making seven games in these interactive lessons. In the first lesson, we'll make Tag Showdown, which is just a simple game of tag. Next, we use the unique features of Nintendo Switch console in On a Roll. Lesson 3 is the auto-scrolling shoot 'em up alien shoot 'em up game Alien Blaster. In the game for the fourth lesson, we'll run, jump, and punch our way to the goal in Risky Run. Fifth lesson is a game called Mystery Room, which will solve three-dimensional puzzles. Hmm. It seems like it's got more hard-coded behavior for like, here's what a person is and what a person is capable of, uh, than I necessarily would like in terms of flexibility, but we'll see how we go. The sixth lesson will make a computer-controlled car to race against in the White Knuckle Thrill Racer. And last but not least, in Lesson 7 we'll make this 3D action game Super Person World. We're going to program games like the one I just mentioned. We'll learn the skills to make your very own games. Alrighty then, we're waiting for you in the first lesson. Be sure to pay a visit. I've been the ever-knowledgeable Bob. See you later. Okay, so am I allowed to... Oh, Danielle? Hang on a sec. My name's Alice. <laughs> okay, so we're talking cryptography now. We've got Alice and Bob. <laughs> so, not Bob. He's the excitable one you already met. Uh, I look similar, but I'm Alice. How do you do? Please don't forget, or call me Bob or anything like that. Oh, sweetie. She's definitely trans. So, Danielle, you know how you got that game to work just now? Be honest, you don't really get what made it work, right? I mean, that's totally fine. You only just started with all of this stuff. But you know, if you're going to make your own game, you need to understand which mechanisms do what. That's why I've set up some checkpoints to help you. I'd like to come to the checkpoint before lesson one. Right then, I'll be waiting. Oh, I got a medal? Are oh, these square things at the checkpoints? Yeah, and I can't advance yet because I have to do this first. Huh. Making the person jump. So thanks for stopping by, Danielle. In case you forgot, I'm Alice. And this here is a checkpoint. The idea is to test whether you really know your programming stuff by solving a puzzle. Maybe this is a bit sudden throwing a puzzle at you and expecting you to solve it, but let's see. Game Builder Garage, the basic. I have something for you that I think will help. Your very own Alice's Guide. We'll give you further tips on how to use Nodon to make games. You select this here, it'll pump the Alice's Guide list. Why not use it to learn the basics of Game Builder Garage? Okay. Okay, lend me your ears and I'll give you the basics of Game Builder Garage. The screen you're looking at right now is called the Game Screen. As the name suggests, this is where the game you've programmed will play out. Here we have the person object. Try pressing B. The person jumped! But what made the person jump exactly? Let me take you through it in Game Builder Garage Basics. Let's take a peek around the back and see the other side of the game, the program screen. Hey peeps! Oh, it's that programmer again. Yo, I remember you. Danielle, right? Looking forward to bashing some buttons with ya. So here we are at the program screen. This is where we'll program our game with the help of a host of Nodon. 
That's right, when it comes to programming, we're here to help peeps. Each node has its own special function within a setup. Watch now, when a button gets pressed, we button node on have that covered. And as for us person node on, I'm the one that puts the person out there on the game screen. That's right, the person that you saw back there was the person node on's doing. Oh, it's nice when people acknowledge my work. Take note of the position of the person node on your program screen here. The location of the person node on determines the location of the person on the game screen. Oh, okay. So you, you don't get to just set like a starting point based on the game play. Okay, that's that's confusing that the code the code display maps directly to the appearance on screen. Like that's not that's not a thing in similar visual programming languages like Scratch and WarioWare DIY do not work this way. For example, if you were to move me over to the right of the program screen, the person would appear over on the right side of the game screen. Let's try it out. Grab the person node on and drag it over to the blue frame. Uh, just okay. They move based on a grid, basically. It's not too tricky. I'm holding A to do this. A button. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Oh, I've moved. How do you think that looks on the game screen? Let's go to the game screen and take a look. Yep. There you go, the person's moved over to the right. Now take note, the program screen is the place where we position things that appear on our game screen, like objects or characters. Okay, head back to the program screen so I can school you some more. Another thing to know about the program screen is that you can scroll it to find more space. I disabled the scrolling earlier because I thought it might have made things confusing. Now that scrolling is enabled, try moving L to put the pointer outside of the screen. There you go, now you know how to get around the program screen. Now, try moving R up and down while holding down ZL or ZR. Oh, zooming, yeah. That's how you zoom in and out. I thought it might get confusing if the screen was moving about here in my guide, so I disabled it. I think this feature will really come in handy when you're building your own games. Okay, let's put the screen back to how it was before. Is there a button to do that? Can I like reset to the default view somehow? Or do I have to let you do it? Okay, all done. Now back to the main topic, I wanted to tell you about how to make the person jump. If you remember, pressing B made the person jump on the game screen. Yo, that was my doing. I'm connected to the button node on C. These lines here represent the connections. You linked them up a while back, right? I'm watching out for anyone pressing B. I got you covered. <laughs> anyone presses B and I immediately send a signal to the person node on along the connection. I know my face is covering that, but I read it out, so it should be okay. <laughs> Thanks for handling that. Think of the signal as a very simple message that passes along a wire. Now let me tell you which part of me to the button node on. See where it says jump? When I get a signal in my jump port, that's my cue to make the person jump on the game screen. Simple, right? Because we walk together. Work together, the person jumps when you press B. Time me to sum it up a bit. The button node on's job is to keep watch for B being pressed. And when B is pressed, the button node on sends a signal from its output port. When that signal arrives at the person, person node on's jump port, the person node on makes the person jump. Easy when you know how. Move the connection between the node on and see what happens. Select the connection. And select this icon to make it disappear. It's like, can I press B or X or... No, I just select the icon. Okay. Let's go to the game screen and see what's changed. Press B. Nothing! The person didn't jump! The connection between the node on gone, pressing B no longer causes the person to jump. Go back to the program screen. Yeah, no connection, no jump, and that's how it works. That's right, if there's no connection, the signal won't reach the person node on when B is pressed. That's why your person didn't jump when you pressed B. Could you reconnect the button node onto the person node on, please? Sure can. You jump. Oh, there it is, I'm getting a signal from the button node on again. Connecting node on together is one of the most important parts of Game Builder Garage. And also, like various other data flow programming languages. This is not really a new concept. <laughs> In fact, I'd say it's the most fundamental aspect of working with node on, so mark it well. Okay, let's check it out on the game screen. Over on the other side, the node on are toiling away to make the program work. 
Once you understand how things work in the background, you really start to look at them differently, huh? That's what makes programming fun. Okay, back to the program screen. Hey, Danielle, remember us, don't you? You're seeing quite a lot of us if you're going to be building games. Yeah, push it to the max. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Yay. You get the hang of the game builder garage basics? Then could you press B to close the Alice's guide list? Sure. I'm going to test your knowledge of the basics with a puzzle challenge. Go here to try your hand at a puzzle challenge. Checkpoints, making the person jump. Okay, so I did jump and get the apple. Danielle, welcome to the puzzles. Here's why we're putting you through paces with some puzzles to make sure you've grasped the basics of Game Builder Garage. To clear this puzzle, you need to make the person collect the apple. How are you going to get it, I wonder? As things are, there's nothing you can do to make the person move. You need to make a change if you want to get that apple. In fact, you want to do some programming all by yourself. Okay, go to the program screen. Keep in mind, you can't just edit whatever you feel like in the puzzles. The only way you're permitted to solve this particular problem is by connecting the button node on the person node on. So how do you think you can help the person get the apple here, making them jump? <laughs> you think you made the necessary change over to the game screen to test it out. If it doesn't work, then head back to the program screen and try again. Okay, give it your best shot. There's a lot of tutorial here. It's a little excessive. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, like, if you have no familiarity with programming, then taking things slow like this is better. Awesome, looks like you definitely have the basics of Game Builder Garage down. From now on, I'll be testing how well you know Game Builder Garage and the node on. Between each lesson, I'll test you with some checkpoints. They're all adding new things to my guide every now and then. That's Alice's guide to you. If there's anything that's not, says anything that's not clear, feel free to hit up Alice's guide. Now, there's nothing holding you back. Get on to lesson one. All right, tag showdown. Let's go. About 40 minutes. Yeah, that's about as much time as I want to put in the video. Let's go. <laughs> oh, I see. Step on adding play controls. And then in... Okay, so we're doing it in stages. Hey, Danielle. I'm so glad you made it. Welcome to the interactive lessons. In case you forgot, I'm Bob. I can't wait to start working with you. Well, it's a day to remember, because you're going to make your very first game. Tag Showdown. Okay. I don't really understand why they used a video there instead of just, like, an in-engine in demo that would have been higher resolution and have less artifacting. <laughs> in this game, a tagger will chase after a runner while dodging a torrent of rolling balls. Sounds fun already, right? And this thrilling game we played out right here on the game screen. Of course, you can't play anything just yet. I mean, you haven't done any programming yet. From here, from now on, the programming that you do on the program screen will be reflected right here on the game screen. Without further ado, let's head over to the program screen and start programming our game. Let's go! Press this button! Welcome to the program screen, where you call up Nodon and program your game. First, let's get our player char character up and running. For that, we're going to need to call a person Nodon. Select objects, then characters, select person. Hello, peeps! I'm the person Nodon. Hi, hey, Pats. <laughs> Danielle, nice to see you again. Now the programming starts. Yeah, great stuff. I'm going to step into the limelight, peeps. Okay, so what happened after we placed the person note on? Take a look at the game screen and find out. I assume they're showing up and I can't do anything with them. Yes. Here's our person on our blank empty game screen. Putting the person note on the program screen makes a person appear on the game screen. I think we've covered this already, but alright. <laughs> Next up, we want to be able to control our player character using the controller. I think the person with left stick now, does it do anything? No. <laughs> person isn't moving at all. Where the programming comes in. Let's get our player character mobile. Okay, so we want to go to input. Pull on the stick node on. Input. Stick movement. Left stick. 
left, right. Boing! Good stick, Nodon. You're Danielle, right? I bet you're hankering after wiggling the control stick about. I sure am. <laughs> He'll link up the stick Nodon's output port with the left-right port of the person Nodon. It's interesting that these ports all look the same. Like, clearly this is an analog signal, right? Because it's moving left and right an analog stick, but jump is a digital signal because the jump button is digital. But they're still like, the ports look identical. They could have had different graphics for the different types of ports to make it a bit clearer. Hey Sticky, time to do what you do best. Sending over the output from the control stick, boing. Okay, let's see what's going on over at the game screen. Yep, let's go. Brilliant, our player character is moving with left stick. Bravo! Now that we've got that covered, we can move on to something else. Wouldn't it be good if our person could jump when a button is pressed too? Get a jumping with B. With the stick note on over the blue frame, I don't think it really matters where it is, but alright. Input, button press, B button. Yo! I've met you already. Ah, but Aunt Danielle, if buttons are getting bashed, I got it covered. Bang, bang, bang! Hit the button node on inside the blue frame. The link has the button node on's output port to the person node on's jump port. See, like, yeah, the stick here, that's from minus one to one. It's an analog signal. This one is a digital signal. It's either zero or one. And they look the same in this game, which is interesting. Uh, I think it would have been clearer to use different types of, like, wires, make them look a bit different to clarify that they're not the same, but it's not doing that. If that button gets bashed, you can be sure I'll let you know. Thanks, bud. And check it out on the game screen. Ah, great, the player jumped when you pressed B. You're done testing that out, head back over to the program screen. Okay, guess what? You cleared step one. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, I want to see what building levels is like. Let's just skip ahead a little bit. That one was very simple. Making the floor and walls. Welcome again, Danielle. Let's get right back to building our game of tag. Have a little look back at what we've done already. Yeah, I can move with the left stick. They've kind of taught me how to do that three times in a row, which is interesting. <laughs> okay, go the program screen. Okay, the game screen node on. Objects. Game screen. Game screen. Oh, I see. And that, that determines where it's going to display when you go over to game mode, right? I'm, actually, I can make this scroll as well if I do the right things. Yeah, it's, it's got inputs to change the X and Y coordinates, so I can make that scroll around. Oh, you must be Danielle. Everyone's saying the next big thing. I sure am. <laughs> uh... Make use of the game screen node on. You determine which part of the program screen will be reflected on the game screen. Couldn't have put it better myself, darling. Whatever I frame will appear vividly and thrillingly on the game screen. Make this game screen node on a little bit bigger. Oh, I see. It enlarges on both sides when I do that. Go take a look. I'm down here! <laughs> I mean, I'm just jumping. I, I can appear on the screen if I want. Ah! <laughs> okay, whatever's surrounded by the game screen node on, locked on the game screen, yeah. Sorry, I'm not reading all this out. There's just so much repetitive text here. <laughs> Object node on to make the floor with, objects, simple objects. Oh, yeah, you can just make like boxes and stuff. Cool. Hey, yep, the name's Object Node on. It's interesting that, uh, like in game objects and like conceptual things that don't appear in game appear on the same grid like this. Uh, if you compare with something like Scratch, for example, you have like 
a programming panel on the left side and on the right side you have your canvas and like they don't really interact it's just the canvas is controlled by what happens in the programming side uh yeah the objects up here a is not wrong so i is not wrong underneath the person note on there we go oops <laughs> Okay, so I need to tell the object to float or something? Select. Settings. Oh, I can see. I can make it non-destructible like this. And then it'll stay put. We've got like a basic physics engine built into the game here by the looks of things. Uh, which is nice. Yeah, it's a pretty small floor. Let's make it a bit bigger. Brilliant. There we go, now we've got something to stand on. Yeah, how do we change the colour? Let's go. I guess I can make it brown. Oh, the sound changed as well. I'm not sure actually. <laughs> Interesting they're using like it pronouns for the for the player character. Interesting choice. Drag it over here. These controls aren't bad. Uh, it's not too tricky to do what you want to do. Uh, I, th I think it would be a bit smoother, like, using the touch screen instead of buttons, but... Like, it seems to be designed with that in mind, but I can't really record that. So... It's still not too bad just using a Procon, so... I think that's cool. Okay, yeah. Got some walls here. Step two complete. Okay, I was kind of hoping to make something that looked a bit nicer, but... Oh, platforms are next. Okay. Okay, let's move on to platforms. I assume it's going to be exactly the same as step two, just make some more objects and stuff. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. It's happening. Make the person smaller? Oh, yeah, I can. It's small now. Now they are little. <laughs> and yeah, it's scaled down my jump height and stuff accordingly. So you can just scale the whole game by adjusting the size of your player character. Interesting. What if I can make my, char my player character look more interesting instead of just like a generic robot? Tiny little one. Okay. Oh, cool. Doesn't look super great. <laughs> Floating platforms, huh? Oh, yeah, you can just rotate and stuff. That's a... The way these platforms look, that's quite, um, that's quite a frame they have there. <laughs> I mean, I mean, look at that. Hmm. <laughs> oh, rotation's a little fiddly. Yeah, yeah. More efficient to copy the one I've already shrunk, or do I don't need to shrink this one? No, no, I need to shrink it. All right. Okay, yep, we can stand on these now. I'm not sure this is the best impression of the demo, that they're only giving you access to doing things really slowly and 
methodically and having to hear a lot of instructions over and over and having no freedom to do anything whatsoever. Um... <laughs> Can I select anything else? It doesn't look like it. Uh, okay, yeah, we've got some nice... Nice, uh, wacky sloping surfaces, apparently. Look at all these beautiful platforms. A work of art. Oh yeah, you can't use the D-pad because I've only programmed it to use the stick. Interesting. It does have analog movement though, I can walk a little bit. Instead of going full speed. I've already been doing that, I just didn't advance your dialogue. Unpacked pulse race in games of tag, huh? Oh, two-player game, hello. There's only one of me here, so I don't know if they have like an AI option for the other player, or how's this gonna work? Splendiferous to see me again, apparently. Okay, so, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how they're gonna handle this, given I'm the only one here. I think having the lines cross over the entire entirety of all three nodons isn't great, but all right. <laughs> hey, you start on this side now. It is very interesting that like the actual programming happens in the same play space as the area design and object placement and stuff. Um, because like I said, scratch already, but Wario a DIY as well. As well, you gave. You had um, you drew objects and placed them like in your in in your screen area, but like giving them rules about how to operate was on a separate screen rather than being in the same same uh, grid space, which is interesting. Let the person know I'm copying them. Now we have two characters, they look identical. Oh, hang on, hang on, can we stand on your head? Yes! Perfect. Game of the year. Why am I running past them instead of pushing them? Oh, hang on. I can manage to push them forward. Interesting. Even though it's supposed to be a 2D game, it's not, because it's technically three dimensions. Oh, okay. So we're doing something a little bit different here. So, it doesn't actually support multiple controllers by the sound of things? Seems kind of limiting. Oh, oh look at all this stuff. There's actually quite a few options. Okay, controller number, I see. So you can have multiple controllers, it's just not doing that right now. Okay, that makes more sense. <sighs> I was concerned for a moment there. <laughs> okay, yeah, one, two, three, four. It supports up to four controllers. Thank goodness. <laughs> 
Okay, so now we can both move. Tag lol. Do I need to do something to stop them from walking like sight behind each other like this? Is there like a way I can restrict them to a two-dimensional plane? And yeah, that's just working with one controller. I can control both of them. It's kind of uncomfortable, but it works. They do look exactly alike. Dangerous red. Weird that there aren't very many options for colors here. Seems very restrictive. Also that you don't see the colors here, like they look exactly the same. Okay. Let's go. And yeah, it happened again. <laughs> what the tag is person note on? Settings? Destructive. Oh, I see. We make one destructive, the other one destructible, and then they'll blow up the other one when they collide. What the? Ah, run! <laughs> ah, okay. Oh, that's silly. I was kind of expecting it to make one of the players have like an AI or something, but apparently not. Hello. Second half, okay. Yeah, I, I know, I just I just did all of this. A launch object note on. They're a bit big and also they're coming out of nowhere. There probably should be something on the screen to indicate where they're going to appear. Copy this one. Uh, I wouldn't call that better. Maybe they should not break each other? <laughs> Yeah. 
Copy it, put it over here. Oh, rawr. <laughs> Why didn't the interval start like immediately and then wait seven seconds for the next sphere? That would make more sense. gonna be wrong, it's gonna make him be destroyed by the wrong things, I assume. Or maybe not. I don't know how the priorities work. Retry, we've got hearts. I, I remember. Are we going to fix it so that they can't like accidentally stand behind each other? Or is that, or we just not care about that? change. Oh, I see. Object break. Oh, broken heart. Oh, that's sad. Okay, I've got a retry note on. Ugh. Oh, we need like a delay note or some kind? Okay, not too complicated. Danielle Magic, finally! <laughs> finally. Yeah, I don't, I don't need a recap, I remember. Pick black? Yes. <laughs> you, said, you said I would get to pick whatever everything would be. 
Oh, whatever I'd like. Okay. Alright, well, I can do this. Okay. Okay. I mean, this isn't really programming, but go off, I guess. Um. Having trouble selecting that one. There we go. Everything else is grayed out. I can't play with any of the other settings. Just, just the color. <laughs> hmm. I like to like go in and preview it, or am I supposed to wait until I'm done? start. <laughs> I don't know why it says light blue instead of cyan. I guess not everyone knows what colour that is. Also very weird that you can't see the colors on this screen. Like, it should say, you know, it should be showing them in the relevant color so you know what to expect, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't do that. Uh, I actually like this one to be pink. I have to play out this thing. Yeah, and then blue in the middle. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. Hmm. Very odd that the colors are so restricted, like you can't just use a color picker and pick whatever you want. It's very, very limited. Oops. That's right, they destroy each other. <laughs> okay, um... Why well, they change the color of the players as well? Hmm. I may be able to, but it's weirdly limited, so we'll see. Can I make you change color? Yes, I can. Okay, uh, there we go. That's better. I think that's everything now. Mm, I, might, I might swap this side around a bit, actually. Hang on. There are a lot of button presses to change the colors of things, it's a bit much. <laughs> That's pink now, so I want this one to be blue. Yeah, I like that.
All right. Oh, done already? I've already had a look, but... I actually made a platformer in high school to have like a time travel mechanic. It was pretty fun. <laughs> I like tagged, it was in Flash, I think. I tagged all the objects with like, should show up in different in different time periods, and then you walked through the little time capsules and you jumped back and forward. Kind of a Sonic CD sort of thing. Oh, we're being congratulated by all the nodons. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Broken Heart. Thank you, person. <laughs> Thank you, camera. Thank you, button. I don't think any of the objects actually thank thanked me, which is interesting. <laughs> I sure have. Yeah, I'm a genius programmer, that's right. Back to the menu. Heck yeah. Okay, so this is, this is free programming. Can I use it at all? That's the end of the demo version, right? Again, like, what's with the progress compression here? They could have just used actual in-game footage. Okay, so you do get to use the, like, tilt on the controller to do this kind of stuff, which is neat. Automatic scrolling, yeah. It looks reasonably flexible, which is nice. You don't seem to have options to draw your own graphics and stuff, which is a thing you could do in in um WarioWare DIY and also Scratch. So I guess I'll keep watching and see. Is it like a clue? Oh, there we go. You can draw your own graphics. Okay, cool. <laughs> Oh, that's adorable. Thank you. Uh, not right now. Okay. Um, this is one thing I was a little, uh, iffy about. In WarioWare DIY, uh, you needed WarioWare DIY to play the games, like, to share them with other people and stuff, but there was a WiiWare, uh, application for free called DIY Showcase, and you could install that for free, if you had a Wii, obviously. And you could download, like, any WarioWare DIY game and play it on there, like, without owning the base game. Uh, and I think for something like this, you just really want to have that option, to have some sort of showcase mode, essentially, that lets you play other people's games they've made without necessarily owning the tool to create them. Because if you think about, like, any other game creation tool, like something like Game Maker or RPG Maker or even something you know, more professional, like Unity or even, you know, the Unreal Engine, like, everyone who plays your game does not have to buy Unity or Game Maker or the Unreal Engine. <laughs> um...
I'll go to the eShop and just see if there's any mention of some sort of showcase mode because I, I do think that is a really, really like important thing for them to offer. I like the data flow programming thing they've designed here. I think it could be a bit clearer about data types. I was talking about our digital analog like signals from the controls are different and it doesn't seem to represent that difference in any visible way. <laughs> um, it looks like the tooling isn't very like, it, is, it isn't restricted at all. Like you can build, assuming you have the full game and not just the demo that's scripted to do exactly what they want you to do. It looks like you can build like a variety of different kinds of games without too much trouble. Uh, definitely it's, it'd be easiest to use these player thingies, but you can create custom graphics of your own and make something completely unique of your, without like basing anything on what they're providing by the looks of things. Um, I don't remember seeing anything about music. Um, in WarioWare DIY they had like a custom music thing similar to the one in Mario Paint. Uh, so you could, you know, basically compose your own music for your game to, pl to, to play in the background. And that was a cool feature. I don't know if this game does that as well. Uh, it doesn't actually say here. I think if you're like, if you're not already a programmer, this would be a really nice, like, nice tool to have because it, it does go step by step and teach you everything very methodically and it, it reiterates things very clearly to give you a good idea of how it all works. I don't know if I want to buy it. <laughs> Um, I think if it had a showcase option, like a way to play, uh, Game Builder Garage games without access to Game Builder Garage, if you don't own Game Builder Garage, you can still play the games, then I, I would go ahead and get it, but it doesn't seem to have that. Um, which it's just, it's just an unnecessary limitation, I think. Uh, like, I've already, I've already compared with, um, with a Warrior Idea Why, but there was also, like, this really old... Uh, like, I think Mac game by Max is called Widgets and Workshops. Um, and that did something really similar, uh, to what I'm describing here, where you could, like, design your little gadgets and stuff to do whatever you want, uh, if you had the game. And if you didn't have the game, someone could export, like, what they designed and you could play with it, but you couldn't edit it. Uh, and you didn't need the game to do that, it was like a standalone executable. Um, I understand that that was a very long time ago, and... Uh, in the modern day, like, what we're talking about with the Switch here is very different, but it would be extremely nice, uh, if this, this tooling had some sort of mode that you could share your creations with people who don't also own this game. Granted, like, it is $50, like, most games are closer to $80 on the Switch, like Nintendo games, uh, and from this demo it does look pretty compelling. Um... I'll think about actually purchasing it, but it's not an instant sale for me, mostly because of the lack of, like, an easy way to share the games with people who don't have or want to build their own, basically. Um, if that makes sense. Um, I don't think there was a demo for Oreo DIY because demos weren't quite so much a thing back then for, like, handheld games on Nintendo consoles and stuff like that. Hmm. But it did have the showcase mode, which, you know, you could use to show people what you got for free, so... Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I definitely like, uh, the, the, the whole integration of here are the programming logic constructs you're using that will make things happen behind the scenes, and here are the platforms and stuff you're placing that will actually appear in the game world. I like having that all on the same grid, that's really interesting. Um... It does mean you have to like keep things tidy a bit more than you otherwise would. Like when we moved that player object around and had to move all the little controllers as well, that would not be a problem in something like uh, Scratch or DIY because in both of those, all the rules that make the player behave a certain way are in a separate area that doesn't interact with the play space. Um, which does make certain things easier, but it's less, less, it's less fun and, and a little less like obvious how things translate to what's going on in the game, I suppose. Um, but yeah, like, I think if you're interested in learning how to program games, I think this would, this is probably a pretty good introduction. Like, from what I'm seeing here, like, the things I've wired up so far, that, that is actually a pretty good introduction to the sort of thing that, things you do with a real programming system. Like, uh, even, like, if you take a step up to something like Game Maker, you do something, you do very similar things with Game Maker's drag and drop, and then from there you can step up to uh, Game Maker language, the scripting thing, GML. 
And from there, you can step up to something like Python, which is so, so much better. <laughs> or, you know, uh, Lua with Love2D, stuff like, stuff like that. Um, I was a little worried that this would be a bit, like, hard-coded into just doing the types of games they're describing here. Like, they're saying 3D platformer, high-speed racing game, or side-scrolling Alien Blaster. But I don't think it's actually limited like that. I think that's just the games they show you in the tutorial. But based on the objects I've seen so far and what you can do with them, I think you can be a lot more flexible than that and you can make more or less anything that happens to take place in a 3D environment. Which can be a 2D game because like a lot of like modern things that seem 2D, it's literally just a 3D environment pointing a camera at something. Uh, like for an example that I love, all of the 2D side-scrolling areas in Super Mario Odyssey, it's, it's not 2D. Uh, Mario is like a really thin, uh, like paper thin sort of thing, kind of like Paper Mario, rather than actually being a two-dimensional texture, which I guess I guess made the engine easier to implement or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. I, I would really like... To, I would really just like to know, like, uh, whether they have some sort of showcase thing in mind. Um, also, whether you can do custom music, because there was no indication of that in what we saw so far. I wonder if I can jump in and just have a look at the options and see. No, 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 it won't let me. Uh, Nerdopedia? Oh, hello. Oh, I can have a look at what some of the others. <laughs> it supports the IR camera. No, no one uses that. Um, on the bottom of a right Joy-Con, if you have a look at it, there's like a little black rectangle. That, that's an infrared camera, but I can't think of any games that use it. Except for 1-2 Switch. It's the only one that I know of. <laughs> Map node on? Oh. Oh, okay. Digitize node on? Oh, okay. So that's, a, that's, a, that's an ADC. Square root, absolute value. Uh, you start to see, like, why visual programming uh, didn't doesn't really take off in a professional context, because having to create, like, a whole node on for an and instead of just typing one character is... It, it's quite excessive. <laughs> Flag? Is that like a boolean? Oh, interesting. This is... this is like a flip-flop. <laughs> okay. Uh, counter random bullseye. Wormhole entrance? Oh, I see. That's like a tunnel so that you don't have to wire things too much together. You can also use it like an event bus, I guess, depending on what you're doing with it. Yeah, there are multiple exit nodes with the same idea. They all receive the value. So you can use it like an event bus if you want. Oh, comments. Comments are in this game. Up to 100 characters. Interesting. I can only have 24 of them. That's that's pretty restrictive. But I guess... Oh, here, sound. The specified sound will play. Oh, okay. So you can connect it to things like a person or an object, and then that's, like, where the sound will come from in terms of, like, 3D space. Neat. Uh, and that's got a bunch of hard, a bunch of sounds you can pick from. If I pick background music, can I, can I write my own background music? That's what I want to know. Okay, okay, I can see that there's a bunch, like, just listed here. Uh, rather than, hmm. That seems a bit restrictive, unless there's something I'm not missing here. Unless there's some extra trick I'm missing here that, like, makes it more flexible. Hmm. Clear objects. Seems like to a certain extent they've built these, like, what nodons you have around the games that they want you to build as part of the main tutorial, but I think it should be flexible enough that that's not a problem. Uh, let me see. Yeah, yeah, the, you both need to have the game is, is my biggest hold up here. Um, and yeah, it looks like it also doesn't have like a, a music composing feature, which is a shame because 
as I've said multiple times, WarioWare DIY did have that feature, and it was really good. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's Game Builder Garage. Um, it's a game I would unequivocally recommend if if it had a like free play other people's games option available. It doesn't, as far as I can tell, um, which I think limits its appeal quite a lot compared to some of the previous things in this in this genre. Uh, apart from that, I think it's very cool. I think it would be a very nice way to learn some of the fundamentals of programming and get an idea of how this sort of stuff all works behind the scenes. Um, obviously when you're doing like a real, real game, uh, you don't tend to use visual programming tools like this, but I still think it would teach you a lot of the fundamentals of, of how to understand code and stuff like that, pretty, and like how to structure code things and all that sort of stuff. and. How bits, bit, how different APIs interact with each other, all all sorts of different stuff. Uh, at the basic level, I think it's a good starting point. You'd want to step up from there to, like I said, something like Game Maker, and then potentially something like Python or Lua. Um, yeah, I basically think it would be good if it had a showcase that you can install for free. It doesn't, so I think it's not super good. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. I, I might keep an eye out and see if they like announce one, and then in that case, definitely get it. Um, but as it stands, like I'm a little reluctant to recommend picking it up just because you can't easily share like your creations the way you can if you'd make them in Game Maker or you make them uh, in RPG Maker or you make them in Love 2D or you make them uh, in RenPy or whatever. I don't know. I'm just throwing things out there. You probably can't make RenPy style games in this. I don't think it has a lot of support for um, visual novels as a genre, but <laughs> um, for more traditional types of games, you shouldn't have too much trouble, I think. Uh, yeah, so that's Game Builder Garage. Um, I think the demo was probably sufficiently long. Um, you might remember I got really upset about how short the demo was for... Um, Phoenix, Immortals Phoenix Rising a little while ago the, from Ubisoft, but this one I think it's a decent length to give you a feel of how everything's going to work. I do wish it let you be a bit more flexible about what you do instead of completely, you can only literally do what they're telling you to do. Um, but I understand why it's not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's about all I've got to say about this. Um, I am holding my breath for some sort of... Uh, try out Game Builder Garage games without owning it feature. Otherwise, I am reluctant to recommend it, but it's cool. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Bye! <laughs>